The year is 3001, and humans have achieved the wonders to become a type 2 civilization on the Kardashev scale. Humans have achieved wonders in the field of science and technology. You can stand at any street and start turning your head from left to right and see cyborgs, smart robots, flying vehicles, smart infrastructure. Heck, you can even find devices that convert animal languages into human speech. Amongst all of this, the only thing that you will not find is a trace of actual humanity and a complete human. It is very rare to find a human without any technological replacement. I am one of the very few humans left on Earth. Just like the white rhinoceros that went extinct in 2021, a complete human is also on the verge of extinction. And the only thing stopping that process is the need of more humans to continue the chain of existence. It's very difficult for me as a normal human to find a job in this era. They don't even need laborers these days. All thanks to these brainless robots tasked to do all the hard work. The most I can do is sell my creativity, which is very cheap these days. I was walking across a city where I came across an old-fashioned advertisement. The advertisement was very bizarre looking. No one does advertisement on paper like a pamphlet and stick it on the wall these days. I read the paper and it stated, Hello to all the remaining humans. I come in peace. I am here for your salvation in the era of artificial intelligence, cyborgs, science and technology. All of you are welcome to my garden where you can spend quality time with other humans and enjoy life as if you were living a thousand years ago. I welcome you all to a place where humans will be treated like humans, where you can multiply your happiness and desire. Well, that was odd, I said to myself. At the end of the ad was an address and some contact info to a garden called the womb. I folded the piece of paper and put it in my pocket. After a tiresome day, I went home and found myself reading that paper again. Yet again, the eeriness of the advertisement intermixed with the joyous message gave me very unnerving vibes. I decided to directly visit the address. Maybe I'll find more humans like me and feel, I don't know, some kind of happiness or gosh, it sounds dumb, or joy. The next day I woke up, dressed myself in my best outfit and went to the address on the paper. It took me about two hours to get there. The entrance was nothing like I expected. There were great high concrete walls, like a facility or industry with security cameras and a huge metal gate with a small gate for people to enter and a guard at the entrance. Oh, I questioned my decision. My gut told me not to go in, but then I brushed the feeling off by telling myself, there's no need to worry. Obviously, it is a human-only place. It needs protection and security from, I don't know, from bad things. At the entrance, the guard asked me to go through this machine, and it was this high-tech detector, which would detect if there was any technology embedded inside of me. But in my case, there was none. So, I went in. There was a long, hospital-like corridor, and at the end, there was a door. And when I entered that door, the view was mesmerizing. I have never seen a garden in my life before. I don't know what an actual garden was, but whatever I saw there, it was beautiful. Luscious, green grass, apple and peach trees, beautiful flowers, birds chirping, and the most important thing, actual, real, complete humans. Hundreds of them. I was in awe and astonished by this place. Why did no one ever talk to me about this before? And that was the first question that came to my mind. I started to roam around, and I met this really cute guy named Jason. Jason and I started to talk about different topics. The more we talked, 
the more connection we felt. Everything was so lovely about this place. I knew this place was man-made and not natural, yet it felt so amazing. It was meant to be like this realistic experience. So realistic that there were mosquitoes around. Mosquitoes went extinct years ago, but somehow they managed to develop artificial mosquitoes that sting like the real ones. Maybe? I, I didn't second guess anything about it, but it was annoying as hell. After spending some more quality time with Jason and walking around, I decided to bid him farewell and go home. After all, this was just a facade. As I started to walk back, I didn't find an exit. Maybe I was lost in the garden. I started to walk around in search of the exit. I asked a couple of people, but to my surprise, no one knew about any exit. So I went to Jason and asked him how to get the hell out of here, but he knew nothing. And he said the most bizarre thing. This is my home. Why do you want me to find a way out? I live here. You see that cottage? That's my crib. In that moment, I got the chills and oh, I realized my gut was right. This place is not right. And then the name started to hit me. The Womb. Why would anyone give a garden such a weird name? There was something wrong here. I started to run in one direction. Maybe I find a wall or an end or something. I ran and ran and ran. There was no sky or sun. The room was at the perfect temperature. Although I was sprinting, there was no sweat on my body. I finally found a wall that felt like it was made up of glass. I looked around to find anything. I was desperate. I decided to climb the highest tree in hopes of finding something via bird's eye view. I climbed the tree and saw a nest on the tree. There were eggs in it, but those eggs were not ordinary. I started to explore the nest and eggs, and to my surprise, there was a hidden camera in it. We were being monitored. There could be hundreds of cameras around. I was desperate to look for an exit. I wanted to go home, no matter how bad it was. I climbed higher on the tree. I stayed hidden in the leaves so that I can witness any suspicious activity. I stayed there for a long time. And then I saw Jason and a few other people walk towards the wall. They tapped on the wall in a passcode-like manner and a door opened and they went in. I was puzzled. Why did Jason lie to me? But why would he not? I mean, after all, we we were just strangers. I had a pen phone on me and decided to record the next incident and see the passcode taps so that I can get the hell out of here. I did exactly what I planned and managed to get out of that area. As soon as I walked out of the garden, I found myself in a total 360 of the previous environment. It was it, it was like a high-tech facility with state-of-the-art technology and equipment all around me, monitoring each and every human inside. They were not just watching us, but they also had the biological fingerprint of all of us. But how did they get all of this? I just came here. Oh, and then I clicked. The fucking mosquitoes. They were gathering DNA samples off of us all that time. Although I had the urge to explore more, I knew I need to get out of there somehow. I found the nearest door and snuck out. What I saw outside the door shattered everything I knew about my existence and mankind. I saw thousands of pods filled with liquid, and each pod had a human in it. There were rows on top of rows of such pods. Each pod had a specific code with the last digit varying. I walked across the room, scared, shocked, and and then I saw a pod with the code TESS3001 XVE-1 TESS TESS Huh. Inside the pod, I saw myself. 
I rubbed my eyes, questioning my vision, and looked again, but I, I definitely saw myself in it. My name is Tessa Johns. The code had my initials in it. After a couple minutes of shock, I came back to my senses and connected all the dots, which was obvious. I was in a cloning factory, hence the name The Womb. I started walking around in a hunchback fashion so that no one sees me. Thousands of questions were in my mind. Why are they cloning humans? What is the purpose of this? What would they get out of making hundreds of the same person? Although we lived in 3001, it was still unethical to get someone's DNA and make clones of them. But how did this facility exist? I managed to get out of the chamber where they kept the clones and walked inside of a laboratory. Luckily, no one was there. I started to look around to find some map or a blueprint of the area in hopes of finding a safety exit. Instead of finding that, I found some data on their system about their research and experiments. They were cloning humans to test on us like guinea pigs. There were videos of inhuman tests. They were chopping these clones alive to test their pain endurance. They were making them have forceful intercourse to test God knows what. They were chopping clones for their body parts and organs to sell them to hospitals. They were performing biomechanical experiments of these clones to develop new cyborg technologies. This was a human cloning factory where all sorts of unethical experiments were happening. They were treating these clones like livestock without having an ounce of care for them. These clones were living, breathing humans, but were treated worse than animals. As I was going through all this data, I felt a hand on my shoulder. I turned around and it was Jason. He looked at me with a cold smile and expressionless eyes. I mean, this person looked like Jason, but he was not the Jason I met in the garden. A clone? Perhaps he looked me dead in the eyes and said, I knew you were smart, but I never expected you to come this far. Your DNA will be worth a lot. I can sell your creative genes and brain. People pay a very high price for such traits. Listening to him explaining the price point of my skills made me nauseous. I felt like life left my legs and I wanted to fall. I had information of something that was not known to the public. By knowing all of these details, I became a threat to this cloning organization. And at that moment, I knew they were not letting me go no matter what. I never found any map of the place, so I cannot make a desperate run. They had already developed my first clone. They were not going to let me go out. No missing case will be filed since they can let my clone out in the world with no recollection of my past, like, like amnesia. My life flashed before my eyes, and then I was made unconscious by one of the cyborg security guards. When I woke up, I found myself in a bizarre swimming pool. My body was connected with wires. I had the bare minimum clothes on my body. Only my head was above water, and the rest of my body was under this, this liquid. I woke up and saw Jason standing near the system to which I was connected to. He came to me and told me, your brain and genes are too precious. We couldn't kill you. You will stay here in this pool for the rest of your life. We will create an army of human clones for all sorts of testing. We will eradicate all the diseases, all the vulnerabilities that the human body has. I will create a new world and I will be the atom for this next phase of humanity. I listened to his plan as I was trapped for eternity in this hellhole with no possible escape. There are no options for me right now. Or maybe there is a hope for an escape and stop Jason before his evil plan succeeded. I, I don't know. I, um, I felt a breeze of hope as I saw the tiniest escape possibility I had. Will I make it? Or will I die a hopeless death in a pool of liquid?